we may we may need a refresher course at the retreat. <laughs> well, right, and I, and I think that's probably well, a good idea good, you because know. you'll have had a few months of of doing things, and maybe maybe it will be bumpy, and maybe it is a matter of. Um, I mean, that's why you're here. here. You'll have a you'll have a you also have uh, you'll have a different mayor. Who I thought was here, but tonight. He wants to step out for a moment. But yes, for the most ahead. important part. So no, he just walked out. <laughs> so the things, seconds. yeah. So as we operate in January, it is going to be a little different. Than we'll have. Well, we'll get we'll get one month of uh, practice under our belts in December. This Can we go to to make up cheat sheets? Yeah. <laughs> Yay! That'll be a big pass. That's how I got to yeah. school. Yeah. 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 I got to think about having a retreat lotion. Since you got a lot of very significant, <coughs> yeah, just from an operational point of view, I think that's. So, so I mean, we're talking to you, Bob. I know this. Those three people are going to be gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah I don't know what can I say? <laughs> All right. So, uh, is there anything else? Are there any questions from council administration regarding the changes? I think uh, thank you very much for showing up here uh, tonight and giving us the uh, comprehensive tour of the things we're going to need to do. Can I, can I ask this? Can we um, jump down to the rules of council and ask them to stay just for a brief discussion? Sure. And then, I, and then, and I was going to say, you might as well. I, I would uh, encourage you to go home to your family and, uh, <laughs> okay. and not stay for. All right. Refuse collection. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I didn't see that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on to uh, rules of council then. Um, Maria talked to me about this. Is, um, you know, we, we talked about, um, I had talked earlier in 2013 about the potential to move the council meeting off of the first Tuesday because we don't have financial information. We're making financial decisions that are Sometimes it's dated and we could have pressure. Um, and in, in the charter, it says that council establishes when council meetings are going to be. Obviously, we want them um, on Waycross. Um, is, it, is it appropriate to for council members to have discussion, uh, those that are elected and not elected, to find out schedules and what works well? Um, are, are we limited in that discussion anyway from Sunshine Laws? Um, let me think. Sunshine Law issue is when you have a prearranged discussion of the business of the body by a majority of the members. I'm worried about, you know, I don't want to have a discussion about refuse collection and call each one of them and say, here's, because that defeats the open meeting right. spirit of the law. And I'm, I'm not looking to do that, but. Is it inappropriate for one council person to say what's your preferred night to meet and what's your right? Here, here's what I would say. I, I think that that is um, that that is appropriate because it's not really anything. Um, it's not business that's that's before. It's not to sign a contract. Well, technically, he's not talking to council members. Yeah. No. Right. Right. That's that's true. This okay. is the magic. This is the magic window, and uh, yeah, you can you can you can't talk. Cranley can do anything apparently. Right. Yeah. But what I, what I would say, what I would say to that is, and you've made it, uh, the point is that it's in your rules of council now of when the meetings are. So to change the meeting schedule, it would take um, modifying the rules of council and. And we've been through that process before. So modifying the rules of council does take um, public you know, discussion here. Now, if you are saying, is it appropriate to make phone calls to say, is the first Tuesday or second Tuesday or whatever day uh, going to work for you? I don't, I don't see that as any okay. type of violation. Just, just but when, you, when it comes down to actually deliberating and discussing the, the actual rule amendment, the rules themselves say you have to do that. My sense is, is that 
we will, what my intention would be is to talk to everybody that will be on council in 2014, have the first meeting on the first Tuesday, and pass new rules of council. And if it's, we keep the same schedule as determined by council, then that's what we'll do. And if we change it, then, then that's what we'll do. So, I mean, that, and that's a piece of business on the first meeting anyway, is to adopt, adopt the rules of council. council. Mm -hmm. Every year, so. Thank you. So, would you say you was just polling? You're just polling the other council members to see if this day is better or that day is day is better. Yes, and I'll tell you uh, what I would say is it's it's really no different than the council right now saying, "Boy, we really need to have a special council meeting so that we can finalize the budget or whatever." Um, so I'm going to call other council members to see what day they're available. They're available. That's, um, I don't think, as long as that's all you're talking about, saying, hey, are you available this day at this time? I don't see that as a okay. uh, violation. No. Well, since Maria isn't here and since I'm co-chair of you know, Laws and Rules, I, she wanted to uh, put something in the Rules of Council about discuss that tonight or not, but about committees and maybe having committees be obliged to uh, attend some seminars or get some training about rules of uh, parliamentary procedure and so they conduct their meetings in a more orderly fashion. <coughs> but like I told Maria, I'm not sure that's a place for rules of council. That's something we're going to do that, you know, and, and do some training as a part of the retreat. Well, you know, being my municipal league offers training for the council members that uh, some members have taken advantage of, some haven't. Uh, the parliamentarians, Kathy, you guys are having your January 25th. January 25th. So, I uh, for new council members, uh, for members well, of not committee members. Well, that is, it's for new council members, current council members. Uh, and commissions. Commission members, I think all of them could benefit by yeah. attending the parliamentarians training uh, that they're going to have. I'm guessing it's going to be up at the uh, up at Fort, Forest Park Correct. Senior Center. Uh, a great program. I had learned a lot every time I went to it. Uh, yeah. And there's yeah, been still a lot to learn. So I, I, I would encourage everyone to attend it. And um, so make that happen. I think it's a matter of communicating. It to them. I appreciate. Them to them. I appreciate the spirit of having well-trained people run meetings. Um, what I I got a little bit of angst about is making it mandatory to go to something on the January 25th when you may be, may or may not be. Able. I I would encourage everyone that can to attend it, and we probably should communicate that to the. Sort of commission members. Um, that are you saying commission members like recreation commission, those people that are on the committee? commission? They're not going to go. I'm thinking of the person meeting. that chairs the meeting so that they know how to run a meeting with something that resembles Robert's Rules of Orders and parliamentary procedure, and you know, they ask for a motion and a second and a vote. And, yeah, and it, it, it's worthwhile. And, you know, if we left it to the uh, you know, I, honestly, I think planning, all the planning commission would go. Honestly, I do. Uh, the BZA, they should probably go, all of them. I think it's important for them, particularly BZA, because they're a quasi-judicial body. Uh, their decisions are, the, you know, it's essentially a court of your fellow citizens. And I think it would be very important The rec commission, I think mean, it's a different story. The chairman of the rec commission, whoever's chairing those meetings, probably should go. Yeah, Vince was. That, that, that January twenty fifth. What is that, Kathy? That's a Saturday. Okay. We'll be at the Wilbur's Park. Yeah, we will Same be place. getting the flyers out on that um, toward the middle, middle to the end of December. Yeah. How long is that? Two 
two yeah. hours, three hours? It's three hours. Oh, okay. In the morning or afternoon? Morning. Morning. Oh, great. That's a Saturday. Uh, That's right. It may be four hours. It may be eight. To do. Okay. Yeah, but they had the uh, orange juice and donuts. Yeah. I recall. Yeah. So that was two of the major food groups. Yeah. <laughs> coffee, so that's a third one. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks that we have any questions. I don't have any more questions. Rules of Council. I don't think anything else involves responsible. All right. All right. You're free to go, sir. Thank you so very much. Questions. Thank you. Uh, finance, streets and services, <laughs> aggregation. Shall we talk aggregation? Okay, it's that time of year. I think we've talked about this a couple of times. Jeremiah Johnson. Can't right now. Just wait. Just wait till the end of the month. Yeah. A couple of times now, I've told council about the, the, the deadlines that we're facing with our renewal for uh, both our gas and our electric. And so the bids have been received, and Mark Burns was down uh, last week and presented the results to me. I'll start with gas, um, which is I IGS, looks like this, right. this one. Okay. okay. That's an easier one. Well, not really. Very complicated. This is the one, if you remember, is based on a formula. It's not just a flat rate, you can save kind of thing. But um, he is recommending that we stay with IGS. Um, after the bids to take a two-year term that will lock in a uh, formula which is slightly better than the current formula we have which is also very good um, and it ties us to a mandatory mandatory opt-out um, requirement every two years and if you remember this is the one that we, we did like a year and then we did a two-year to get on the cycle so we'd also look to be with a bigger group of right, people exactly, which yeah. is um, so we'll want to try to stay with that so um, if you turn to the second page, this is where it starts getting kind of complex, but I uh, put a star next to the scenario that he is recommending, which is that last one, um, the 24-month term. Um, you can do, this is again based on a, uh, a formula, which um, these are all the elements of the formula that you're, that you're if you read it across, that they work into it. Um, turn to the next page, uh, towards the bottom they actually show you how you use all those in the formula to come up with the rate that you're going to have. Um, the little chart he has above on that third page shows the um, NIMAX, which is the, the rate that they're using in the formula, and he's comparing it to the new formula, the current formula in the middle, and then the savings, and right. so under any scenario um, our, our current formula is very good, but the new rate is even better, um, which will result in a little bit larger savings for those who are participating in the program. So um, that one's pretty kind of dry. You would need um, to renew with IGS for two more years, and that would be an item that would be on your December council agenda. Now, let's look at electric. And, and citizens are automatically enrolled unless unless they opt out. We, so we opt out program, right. And in fact, what this will, um, what they'll do again is uh, they get lists from Duke because during the, they'll, there's a, there'll be a whole new opt out period for anybody who maybe wasn't on the program and wants to get on the program, they'll have that opportunity. Or again, people get the opportunity to opt out if they want. But I, I still believe, um, from all I'm hearing, we have the best rate. And so what kind of these rates compare to Duke's current rates? Oh, there are, um, let's see, I don't know if he gave us a sheet in there. Uh, better. This, the gas is the one where we did not do a fixed rate. We took it that he, he picks it. Um, you know, they, they monitor it and then select the best rate for any given month, so it varies. And, and I think like 18 out of the last 24 months, they were better than Duke. So gas is a little hard to quantify in that manner, but their performance is, has been very good in that regard. And if at any time it appears that it's dropping, he can fix it at any point, but we've stayed on the fluctuating. So does Duke operate the same way as far as No, the no they don't. No, we just strip it assumption rate, fixed rate. 
I've used that. The gas recently has gone down, correct? Um, I really couldn't answer that question, but when I get to the next one, I can tell you that I guess um, I guess both of them are going to go up, which is why he's recommending in the next one you'll see for a three-year agreement to um, during those three years it's expected something's going to go way up. <laughs> so we're we'll be locking in a rate on the electric. And you know, if I remember right, and sorry, this is really complex. This is why we get a consultant handles this issue. <laughs> I think he said that all the electric is generated by natural gas anyway, and that's why they will both t trend upwards. Mm -hmm. So if we can lock in our electric rate, we won't feel the impact well, as it goes up. Obviously, one of the lines is generated by the grid. Yeah, I know. That's, yeah. but that's, that's yeah. diminishing. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let, let's switch real quick. But he's going to stay on the gas, he's going to stay on the picking it month to month yes. still for now. Yes. Okay. Um, now, on the other one, the electric, um, which is the one that's in color, I wanted you to see the different um, um, items, which is why I wanted, highlighted it. I, I, the first energy solution down towards the bottom, 36 month, 5.36, is the one that is being recommended. Um, just to hop back up, I did, I gave you the ones with my hammered notes as we met. Uh, Duke is currently at five. Uh, we are currently at 5.6, Duke is at 6.1, this rate's even better at 5.36, so we're, we're pretty excited about that. Um, now this one, you remember there was a civic donation that we did not take the last time. Yeah. Um, however, uh, Mark's recommending it and I'm, I'm recommending it as well. And the little chart on the bottom right there is, is really the reason why. Um, we're looking at a 5.36 rate versus a 5.33. Um, over the period of 36 months, that's a cumulative savings of $3,000 if we pass that extra three pennies to the residents. However, on how they it's calculate their formula, it's three hundredths of a cent. Yeah, it's three hundredths of a cent. Oh, sorry. Yes, it is. Um, how they calculate the formula, it would be a $9,500 contribution to the village because they do that based on the number of users. So. Uh, Point being that the um, you know, it's, yeah. we get a significant amount of money yeah. for the, the what's being foregone, if you want to perceive it that way, by residents is is a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. Does that make yes. sense? Well, We're going to well, gain nine thousand. It's going to cost all the residents collectively three thousand dollars. And, and it really won't cost them anything. They're still going to be getting a, a much lower rate with the new rate. Instead of being 5.33, it would be 5.36. And if residents don't like it, they can still opt out. Oh, they, they could, can, but they're going to have an even bigger savings with it than they have right now. Yeah, so, so. if they're even, right. Did you pay two pennies? Um, and, and, and he's, the civic donation makes more sense for the longer terms. The money to the general fund is greater than the savings for going by residents. Um, That's a contribution that they make. The other thing that they like in this, uh, that we like in this proposal is that uh, if Duke's yeah. rate yeah, would drop do the, the lower in, the over the three year period that we have, um, First Energy is willing to reduce their rate to match Duke's, or if they feel they can't do that, uh, they're willing to send everybody back to the Duke's um, supply with, at no penalty. Um, so we like that clause a whole lot. Okay. Uh, just for comparison, the 5.36 cents per kilowatt hour versus the 5.33 cents per kilowatt hour uh, looks like it's about three dollars and uh, 22 cents or 24 cents for the average resident that's consuming 10,800 kilowatt hours per year. So right. about three. Three bucks, three bucks a year yeah. for the village to gain not over $9,000. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and we we do have some minor costs associated with administrating this plan. Mm -hmm. It's just a way to capture a little bit of that. And as Yvonne said, and compared to last year, it's still better. They're actually saving mm -hmm. money even with that three cents. Yeah. Or yeah. I mean, it's even cents. better than what we had. So that's pretty good. All right.
Is that all? Okay, so the. Um, yeah. I'll have legislation for you in December. December. So this will be a resolution. Be a resolution. No, we get to do a resolution. We have to practice. All right, who gets it? Me, I guess, right? <laughs> Is that finance? I'm guessing it's coming through. Yeah, I guess so. All right. Fair yeah, enough. I think we screwed up. up. Is that here or is this me? I think it's. Huh. I think it's our service on the stream. Yeah. Okay. okay. That piece that they'll match to is huge. Yeah, it so, is. Yeah, the yeah. fact that if they can't match to, that they'll just go ahead. And, that's good. All right. Okay. Last item of the night aggregation. Aggregation. Um, Oh, no, you mean refuse collection. Yep. Refuse collection. And, and actually, we're, um, we don't have to have this approved until early next year, but we're entering into um, the first year of a one-year renewal on our, our rookie contract, which has been very, very good. Um, and our rate is going up slightly this year, and it'll go up a little bit more next year. But the real difference is in our, I, I guess there was just, I have some misunderstanding on the part of Rumkey way back when this was originally bid that uh, we ended up with an extremely, incredibly low rate for recycling. Um, it's currently in place and will remain in place until 2016 when we get a new contract. Um, now, a couple issues that are coming up in um, what we'll never see a rate like we have been. We, I had a meeting with the Rumkey um, gentleman, Dean Ferrier. And he uh, said that we can expect it to go up to the 1250, 1275 category. Um, you know, the individual, the subscription, I think they call it recycling, won't, won't happen anymore. You know, th things are a lot different. And we talk about some different ways that maybe we can uh, ward our contract. And even though we're away from it, we might want to be thinking about these over the next couple of years to figure out what's going to be the best way for us to go. But um, one proposal that he made that I told him I would bring to you tonight is. Um, you know, a lot of our residents have expressed an interest in getting maybe like a, a rolling recycling, which we do have available now, but uh, they all love to have them. But that isn't going to happen until 2016 with our new contract. Um, but we currently have a 75 cent rate for um, the red bins that they would be willing to extend to um, for us to do, provide everybody with a red bin. Um, and then pay the 75 cents. That, that is an increase for us because we collect right now, we have about um, 397. Um, as of the last bill, we have people recycling with the red bins. Other people um, rent the rolling bins from, from Rumpke, but um, to our current bill, that would add $14,706 if we wanted to get all of our residents recycling right now. Um, so that was their offer, and going in um, 2016, regardless of what we do now, we can stay right where we are and not get people used to it, but the recycling portion of our bid in, in 2016 will probably go up to about $54,000. So the more you can do to get your people used to recycling, your residents, our residents to recycle, um, another element of those bids will probably be, it will perhaps be based on tonnage, so if you are recycling more, your tonnage to the um, dump goes down, your charges go down. It's, I'm sure you've been reading and hearing about these things anyway. So I, I guess the thing for you to be thinking about right now is, is do we want to start encouraging that and incur the additional cost? Um, just hold off to 2016, but uh, as we go, we'll be developing ways to um, encourage the residents to um, recycle and ways that we can do our bid and get to that point. So how much is it going to cost? The uh, resident, the increase in the recycling. Oh, uh, so well, we, we, don't, we don't know for sure in 2016, but it, it will probably be sizable. If, if we're not passing it on to the resident, that portion would probably be in the neighborhood of $54,000. What do we pay now? Yeah. Well, right now we, we are bill our residents who recycle a um, dollar yeah. a month. Yeah, right. So that's you know kind of paying for itself. The recycling because they only charge us for those who it, it's called subscription. They only are charging us for those. How many people do we have on subscription? Three hundred and seven. Times twelve. 
get the, what the, yeah, because that's the, the, the order that we do. Run less than 5,000. No, we're, we're doing it. So at Valley Residence for a dollar a month? It's uh, voluntary. 12, 12, uh, we do year, it year. Annual. Yeah, $12 a year. Or your bill is annual. Right. You don't recycle? Get the red pen. Hmm? You don't recycle? What's wrong with you, boy? I just throw it in the woods. Oh, <laughs> that's um, where you're. But so there, are, and, and there, are, there are others who are the, raising the their, their, their roller directly from our piece. I don't take care of it. But comparing the $12 annually that we charge for the red pen, how much are we thinking that's going to increase? Because that's the way I would first. That, that will increase. Re recycling out there right now is, is up to two seventy five, two eighty a month. So we've got it for seventy five cents. So we're we're in a really good position right now. That's so, uh, that's okay. going to go up. So you so could obvi obviously and I know we just carry it up and put it in one of the recycling dumpsters. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we would do that. So we manage our own recycling. So anyway, I guess there's a lot of ways we can skin that cat. Yeah. Who, who pays for the recycling, recycling depositories? The drop-offs we do. We pay for Yeah, it, and they are used heavily. In fact, that's right. We're getting an award tomorrow because of our, yeah. our, our residents are... Right. Yeah, we don't want to... Thank you. <laughs> we, we don't want to have anything that I used to put in discards if the rate's going to go. Oh, my God. Right, right. We'll anything we can do to encourage recycling. Well, and this isn't anything we have to decide right now, but I wanted you to be aware of it and be thinking about it. And, and so in 2016 is when we start then? Uh, yeah, why don't you go to bid 2015? Okay. The mayor elect probably has to pay on this. Yeah, to give a little background. Um, Rumpke did make a mistake in their bid, and, and we did this with three other communities. And since Springdale had a lot more muscle than we did, and uh, Springdale and Loveland, Loveland part of our bid back, and I can't yeah, remember. Uh, but anyway, uh, prior to that last contract, we the residents were paying twenty-four dollars a year for recycling. The village was subsidizing that on top of that. So I think recycling was maybe three dollars a month per resident uh, before we went to what we're doing now. So we had a big savings, even to the village, because we were subsidizing. Uh, subsidizing the recycling program. Um, so, but they, uh, you know, they wanted to not follow through with the contract uh, with the, you know, They'd made the mistake and they wanted to back out of it. And then we uh, uh, put pressure on them and uh, they agreed to it, which was kind of surprising. Resolution, do we have to look like resolution or that would be a resolution? Well, if it isn't going to cost us anything, who, who, what's the motive? Who's the motivator? The recreation commissioner? No, who's making this happen? Oh, uh, I mean, do we really, do you really need us at all? Please? It's going on public land, yeah. Oh, Council okay. should probably, uh, to the uh, display of a uh, uh, more yeah, the money's being thing. donated for the for this uh, for this guy. Is it bronze? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a no brainer. Yeah, that'd be another resolution. Okay. Will, yeah. will it be located? Please. We're located. Give her the map. Oh, oh great. Oh, Give her oh. a picture and a map. Oh, here, I'll give her mine. Here, here you go. Okay. Uh, Legion guys have efforts? I think so, yes. Did you, as I told Eric, I'm 100% for it. I think it's great. The only thing I thought to think through what's the placement where we want it. Do we want it by when the other one more? Do we want it by itself? Does that kind of make the comments feel like it's a big war memorial? Or do we keep it closer to one of the other ones? Is it going to restrict anything that we're going to do later? I don't think so. You know, 
you, you could put it right in the middle of the shadow pole walkway, too, and that would be, I think, a nice addition. It would fit there real nicely. On the shadow one? Yeah. Um, Where might it there for the shadow? The pole's in the middle, right? No, the pole's one, on one edge. Kind of, the, the pole touches roughly one, the, the sort of southern part because the sun's coming from that direction. Oh, okay. Um, I, you know, you can go by and check it out, but you ought to talk to Luigi guys. Okay. And can, and can look. I can talk to the landscape architect. Okay. <laughs> so, I, you know, putting it someplace on the commons, I think, is a great idea. Yeah, I Absolutely. Uh, you know, to, uh, instead of just exercising entropy and trying to spread everything out as much as possible, perhaps we should think about location. location. You know, I don't know symmetrically how it would fit at the uh, the World War II memorial because I mean that's the obelisk. It's all everything's nice symmetric there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, over by the the, the uh, shadow pole walk could be a good place. Will that be get involved with one of the, about the shadowing of the pole then? Um, the you know, I don't know. Could you could, uh, and... we, we, we can, um, I believe that could probably be simulated yeah. uh, without too much trouble, but I suspect you could uh, find a spot on it. How, how tall is that? Uh, by the time it's sitting on the pier, it might be about five foot. Five foot. That's something to be uh, something I'll to be bet considered. you a dollar, uh, Jeff Alder may have something to say about that. Some input. Yeah. yeah. That's just kind of scary. Uh, yeah, this is, dying. well, this is, yeah, and this is yeah. Jeff's thick, but yeah, our, you our, know, our, I, I think doing it is a, a perfectly wonderful thing. And too, it's yeah. great that it's donated. Wow. Yeah. So it works fine with me, but it's a neat idea. Yeah. Okay. So, um, the, the biggest thing I'll do is just let the net person know that they can start actually making it. Do they want to be making it to bronze during the wintertime to make it available to do something with it in spring? Okay. So that was the thought. Excellent. I think that would be plaque on with the names of the council people that approve it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Made our mark. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, what are you going to say? sassy in his uh, short time, isn't he? We've got a all right. If, if there's nothing else, I would entertain the motion to adjourn. And you like Amory. Is there a second? Second. If there are no objections, we stand adjourned. Mm -hmm.